everyone and welcome to Nomad Programming. If you have ever wondered who made the internet, watch this video to learn about the beginning of today's information age. Today's technology would not have existed without the invention of transistors in the 20th century. A transistor is a semiconductor device that is an electronic component. It relies on the electronic properties of semiconductor material for its function. Its conductivity lies between conductors such as metallic copper and insulators like glass. Transistors are used to amplify or switch electrical signals and power. The most commonly used transistor for both digital circuits and analog circuits is the MOSFET metal oxide silicon transistor, which is a field effect transistor that uses an electric field to control the flow of current in a semiconductor. FETs are devices that contain three terminals, source, gate, and drain. It controls the flow of the current by application of a voltage to the gate, which then alters the conductivity between the drain and source. MOSFET transistors consume significantly less power and allow much higher density than the bipolar transistor. Transistor was the main reason for the growth of telecommunication bandwidth over the next half century. Without transistors, there would not be today's internet. Definition of the internet. The word internet itself stands for interconnected networks. It is a network system that connects millions of web servers run by several providers, individuals, companies, universities, and governments. For communication, selling products online, uploading different kind of content and offering services without involving a central authority. Today the internet has grown much larger and the use of the internet as well. It has created businesses solutions, social media, offering services, online education, virtual meetings, online banking and many more. A brief history of the internet. The concept of interconnected computer networks arose from the fundamental theoretical work of information theory, a mathematical study of quantification, storage and communication of digital information, programming information in the form of sequences of symbols and impulses and how rapidly information can be transmitted. The theory was developed by the Swedish physicist and electronic engineer Harry Nyquist and an American electronics researcher Ralph Hartley in the 1920s. And in the 1940s, the American mathematician, electric engineer, and cryptographer Claude Shannon provided a firm understanding of trade-offs between signal-to-noise ratio bandwidth and error-free transmission in the presence of noise intercommunication technology and the transistors. In the late 1950s, Computer science was an emerging field that began to consider time sharing or multitasking, sharing computer resources among many users at the same time and applying this concept over a wide area of a network. In the early 1960s, a Polish-American engineer, Paul Barron, proposed a distributed network that was based on data in the form of message blocks and Welsh computer scientists. Donald Davis constructed the principle of packet switching, grouping data into packets that are transmitted over a digital network in telecommunications. In 1965, MPL, National Physical Laboratory, the most extensive government laboratory in the UK, proposed a national commercial data network there. DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, is a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense, responsible for the development of emerging technologies for the U.S. military. Awarded contracts in 1969, the development of the ARPANET project is the first wide area packet switch network and the first to implement TCP over IP protocol. Directed by the American internet pioneer Robert Taylor and managed by the American engineer 
Jr., Lawrence Roberts. ARPANET has adopted Paul Barron and Donald Darius hackett switching concept. Leonard Glenrock supported the ARPANET project. He was a computer scientist at the UCLA University of California, Los Angeles. ARPANET network was built by Radeon BBN Technologies, American research and development company in Massachusetts, United States. In the early 1980s, the National Science Foundation funded national supercomputing centers at several universities in the U.S. and provided interconnectivity in 1986 with the NSF Net project and the emergence of architecture such as domain name system and adopted TCP over IP internationally on existing networks marked the beginning of the internet. The first commercial internet service provider emerged in 1989 in the US and Australia. The ARPANET project was decommissioned in 1990. The British computer scientist and physicist Tim Berners-Lee, a researcher at CERN, European Organization for Nuclear Research, proposed and prototyped the project Inquire in 1980, which was a simple hypertext program that had some of the semantics of the World Wide Web used to share documents at CERN. Then in late 1989, Tim Berners-Lee wrote a memo about suggesting an internet-based hypertext system. After that, he created the World Wide Web in 1990, the world's most dominant software platform. It is an information space where documents and other web resources can be accessed through the internet using a web browser by linking hypertext documents into an information system accessible from any node on the network. In late 1990, the internet was publicly used by commercial companies and companies like Netscape, which offered email services that started to have more attention from the public. In 1994, the internet has taken off fast and CERN was not overseeing internet systems or applications. It existed for energy, physics, experiments. Tim couldn't stay there, so he moved to the MIT's laboratory for computer science, which became the host for a new World Wide Web consortium. The internet has opened many opportunities for businesses, communications, and e-commerce that it turned into the internet we know today. Just to clarify, the whole internet is not owned or controlled by any person or organization. They may own the infrastructure and devices that connect to the massive network, but the internet is not owned or controlled by anyone. The internet is for everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed today's video. If anyone would like to add any facts about today's video subject, please share them in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.